Okay, you guys, it's me, Erica Reddick, here at AmFest. I'm super excited to have on our next guest. Now, Mr. Braden Sorbo, I have interviewed both of your parents, mm -hmm. both of whom are absolutely fabulous, and uh, I didn't know that you too were an author. Okay, mm -hmm. so what does it say? The BS Guide to Politics, Understanding Current Events Through Sarcasm. Okay, so Braden, tell me what inspired your young man. How? Tell everybody how old you are. I'm 22 years old. You're 22 years old. You said, I don't want to go to college, and your parents were like, fine. So what are you going to do instead? And you said, I'm going to become an author. Pretty much. I graduated and I decided, you know, I was, it was a toss up. I wanted to be an actor and oh, okay. I figured I didn't necessarily need a degree to stand in front of a camera, right? No, <laughs> not really. So I decided to write a book instead. Right. And I was mulling over all the options in my mind going, what should I talk about? And it ultimately boiled down to, I'm a class clown. I like making people laugh. I've always been involved in politics and saying controversial things. Why don't I combine the two? Because there's too many people in politics right now, one, don't understand what they're saying yep. and what the words actually mean, but two, <laughs> who, who are just angry. And politics it's is such so a heavy, rude. dense, angry, hate-filled sphere uh, that you just get stuck in it like a bubble. It is. And so my book is a lighthearted take on politics. Well, what is it they call, like, YouTube, certain YouTube channels, they call it rage porn? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like exactly. everybody's so mad and it's like, in order to, like, increase the anger and like marinate in it they watch people who are just angry yelling cussing and yeah, stuff like that exactly and not even they may not even be providing a, a good take on the conversation most of the time they are they're just yelling and since they have the emotion behind it that's all you really need and that's you know so one of the things we do at generally irritable is we do comedic shorts you like to add comedy i mean obviously it's me riding an eagle okay yeah this, that's a real photo too this is i took I this is what i did i said <laughs> i said i want you to take my actual photo and put it on a person in armor riding an eagle in armor i mean i tried to get as silly as possible it's i would say that's pretty serious right taking back america i like it taking back america one laugh at a time because this is what you said comedy is one of those things that you can use that breaks through all that salaciousness all yeah. of that noise and so what now a lot of young people a lot of people your age would not consider themselves conservative or on the right or a republican or anything like that do you feel like it was your parents that influenced you? Where do you think you got your, um, how do you feel like you were influenced in your positions on politics? I was polarized by social media as a whole. My parents definitely had a great impact on my upbringing. Obviously, they're my Obviously. parents, you know, and I was homeschooled, so I spent a majority of my time as a child, as an adolescent, as a teenager with them, and I'm very grateful for that. It, it molded me into a much better person than most public schoolers <laughs> I know, at least, you know, I, that's what I like to think. But, you know, it, it, it really boils down to the polarizing side of politics where mm. we're, what we're seeing now where the left is eating itself, essentially. You see the oh, people storming the Democratic yeah. Capitol and they can't do anything about it. They've created a monster that they can no longer control. Mm. And so what I've noticed is the people who cater to the mob can only cater to the mob so long before the mob eats them. And at that point, I decided, you know, it might be better to just go against the mob from the start because then I know I'm against them. If I'm catering to them, they could turn on me whenever. Oh. But if I'm against them from the beginning, I know that they don't like me and that, you know, works in my favor. Isn't that so wise? That is actually a really wise thought because it otherwise you are then constantly in fear. Oh, what's up, man? Um, you're <laughs> constantly in fear about, um, Am I going to get canceled? What do What do I have to say? Right, you're then thinking about, oh man, I don't want to offend anybody, or what you do I got to do? Can't be canceled if you don't care. Oh, there's a. Do you know the comedian Matt Reif? Yes. Sure. Yeah, he yeah, posted yeah. an apology to his Instagram. He said, "Look, for all those offended, please click the link here to my formal apology." And it was special needs helmets, and everyone got really, really mad at him for that. And then in another Even show, he mad. told a six year or in a comment section or something, he told a six year old that his mom would be buying him presents with OnlyFans money. And people are getting mad at him. I'm going, he's a comedian. What, 
all he's doing is doubling down because he knew from the beginning that the mob would turn on him. So yeah. he didn't cater to the social media. He he had the good looks and he had the charm and he had the, the crowd work. And so it carried him so far. But once the mob realized, wait, this guy might not be a leftist, yeah. they went, hold on a second. And he's doubling down and it's amazing. It's good seeing someone with his fame kind of fight back. And yeah. it's, it's really... Honestly, the things that he's doing for comedy are great, and that's what I'm trying to do on social media with my comedy, is, is make people think, you know, actually yeah. force a conversation. Right? Make comedy funny again. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, think about it. The way that, like, late night shows are now, right? It used to be that the, the late night shows were comics, mm -hmm. and they would tell jokes, and it would be funny. But now, they're talking like they want, they want, they want clapping, right? They want to be recognized as being uh, the voice of the establishment rather than actually challenging the establishment and making fun of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I do. It's exactly that. You have tons of writers who are thinking, you know, well, maybe this is funny, but they're writing for an audience of politicians. They're not writing for people mm. anymore. People want to laugh. The entire point of comedy is to challenge the narrative. Comedy yeah. is supposed to be subjective, right? Yeah. What you may find funny, I might not. But right. that's the beauty of it. And that's that's why we have comedy. And that's there's so much. Uh, I remember there there was a time uh, when I was a little bit more uppity than I am today, and there were things that would offend me. Like I'd hear comedians tell like a rape joke or something like that, and I'd be like, "That's not funny. How dare you?" Uh, you know, and I'd get all mad and offended. But there is a reason for all of those things. And most of the time, now not everybody, some people have terrible attitudes, but the majority of the time, I feel like good comedians are really trying to challenge the narrative. They're trying to challenge the establishment and, and, and bring forward what the average American is actually thinking, right? And so, so how do you, when you, when you sat down to write this book, when you get out there and you want to do comedy, what are you keeping like in the top of your mind to um, to keep you on track, to to keep you lighthearted, and to not buy into the rage mob? Uh, not much. I like to tell people I have two brain cells, and they're both fighting for third place. <laughs> you know, I, I, there's not much going on up there. You know, the, the wheel's spinning, but the hamster's dead, and and that's the best way that, that I like to phrase it. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. When, when you aren't focused on what other people are thinking, you, you're a lot happier. You know, I went out, I do country dancing, West Coast and country swing, and I picked yeah. it up this past year, and I've just, I've loved it. And I've been going out to country bars wherever I travel. I don't know anybody there. But the second you realize that it really doesn't matter what people think, whether it is with comedy, whether it is with going out, whether it is just, you know, doing something yes you will actually enjoy what you're doing a whole lot more it and so, so i true. went and i danced with a bunch of different people i made a bunch of friends and now when i go back i have more people to talk to right same thing goes with comedy when i go and i i tell jokes to groups of people when people react it tells me all right this is someone i wouldn't want to be friends with or this is someone i would want to be friends with based yes. off their reaction yes it's like when i meet a girl i'm like i want eight kids within the first 10 minutes of meeting if they're not okay with that then i can leave but at least i found that out quickly right get it done and over with exactly rip the band-aid off front. we don't have to be friends we don't have to be cool no hard feelings move around i think though it's so fascinating because the the sense of belonging right the sense of belonging identity things like that are so important to us that people will forego their own beliefs their own their own truth if you will um, in order to be part of a crowd. Yeah. And and so I think that a comedian, first and foremost, you really can't care. I mean, yeah. I, I tell jokes, we do comedic shorts that I think are funny and make me laugh. I make myself laugh hysterically over dumb stuff. And I just have to assume that other people are also going to think it's funny. Well, someone will tell me, oh, that wasn't funny. I go, that's great. My target audience is myself so I don't care if you didn't enjoy it I liked it yeah but a lot of people don't realize that uh, when it comes to comedy right humans are we, we like to pair bond with other humans Ooh. we work better in okay. crowds that is mm. that that's what we do yes right? and so when people say things that are polarized when people say things that are that are charged politically that that could divide potentially people don't like it yeah like people get they they get tense. They kind of stand off. They they 
don't want to necessarily engage with that person because okay he said something that was that was inflammatory if I engage with him maybe there's a chance that people see me as inflammatory too so I should probably stay back and people need to not be afraid of that as much yeah, like I, I said comedy is subjective what you may not have found funny 10 years ago you find funny now absolutely okay so Braden Sorbo Yes. Tell everybody where, okay, the BS Guide to Politics, where can they buy this book? Where can they find out more about it? They can go to sorbostudios.com. They can get my shirt here too. It says, take steroids. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I've been speaking so much already. Um, <laughs> so now do you actually think people should take steroids? It depends on the steroids. I, I can all do a cycle in a little bit maybe. We'll I mean, see how hey, I, hey. when I hit 25, 30. People take steroids all the time. Like albuterol or whatever it is. Nothing, no, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. The inhaler for asthma is exactly. a steroid. Exactly. So maybe people really should take steroids. Maybe they should. I, I have a whole, I have a whole brand of these shirts that are all available on the website as well. I have the Futures Patriarchy. I have fun <laughs> ones like that. Okay, so you're a troll. Okay, a little bit. So it should say Braden the Troll Sorbo on here. It's a here. fine nickname. I'll, I love I'll it. I'll wear that with it. pride. Okay, Sorbo Studios. That's where they can get your book. That's where they can get your merch. Yes. And where, if they want to follow you on social media, how do they look you up? Braden Sorbo on any and all platforms. That's it? That's it. That's it. And I keep it simple. B-R-A-E-D-E-N. Yeah, Braden. I keep it simple. My parents didn't when they named me. They did not. My dad told me it was between Braden and Beer Fart, though, so I'm glad he chose that one. You are so your father's son. <laughs> Thank we you. got to we got to interview your parents in New Hampshire at the first in the nation summit. So they sh they were there uh, with their books and sharing. And um, when I saw your dad's custom suit mm -hmm. with his tweets on the vest, I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. And then he he was like clowning our other guests as we were doing interviews and things like that. Um, so we just. We just thought your parents were so delightful, and she and you, so your mom came by today, and she was like, "Our son is here," and I was like, "Dude, bring him by! You have offspring. We need to meet him." The Sorbos like this. to have fun. What I love it. Say? You, I love it. I, it's obvious that you that you had a good upbringing, that you know how to have some fun. Y'all get this book, the BS Guide to Politics. It's got. It's, it's first of all, you got Andrew Clavin on the back Andrew here. Andrew Clavin, Governor Huckabee, Mike Lindell from My Pillow, DC Drano, Brandon Tatum, I Officer love it. Tatum did the forward. Uh, we we got some good people in here. So this is like you've got. A, a, it's a dictionary. It's a dictionary. I have a whole dictionary. It's a perfect gift. I don't know when this will air, but if it's before Christmas, people should buy oh, it. Oh yeah, this is y'all. This is a great gift. It's a great, a great stocking gift. stuffer. It's a great. It'll pair well with our book reasons to trust okay here we go if you want sarcasm and silliness here no this take, is the combo take right a look, here take a look this is i read this already okay. oh it's a yeah. great read i highly recommend it so you need this book of here. definitions to be able to get to read our book yeah otherwise you won't understand it <laughs> <laughs> thank you brayden thank, thank you, you for joining us today and we'll see y'all soon